All right, well, we was on our way to work, and my sister called me, who's my next door neighbor, and there's my place. There's a bird goblin in this woods, right there's the hen. I'm going to keep moving so I don't spook her. I ran out on my front porch, I can hear him gobbling here. She has pet turkeys. It's hard to figure out him from them, but he's a little bit down here, and she's over here. I'm going to sneak in behind her house on my dad's property and try to make this work. See what happens.
that was one of the best hunts of my life. Oh. Not a real big spurred bird, but look at that for a rope. I was worried I missed him. I shot. I could see his head. And I shot. He didn't flop. He didn't nothing. He had his head perfect over the hill. I said, I'm taking him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It has been a rough season. But here's the story. My sister called. I got done hunting. I was going to work. And um, I was on a bird this morning. I don't know what happened. He just shut up for whatever reason. And... Um, I decided I was going to go to work. I get home. I'm packing my lunch, throwing everything in my lunchbox. My sister texts me, who's practically my neighbor. Um, there's a bird goblin behind my house. Well, she is my neighbor. I shouldn't say she's practically my neighbor. She's my next door neighbor. So I walk out on my porch, and she has pet turkeys. Hairs are going crazy, but I can hear one off to the side. And uh, my dad owns the property behind her house. So I um, decide, which there, there's never turkeys here. I've lived here 28 years I've lived here. And I have never known a gobbler to be in this woods. It's a three-acre cow pasture is all it is. Well, I quit jumping my side, but I run downstairs, I should say, put all my stuff on, grab my camera, jump in my side-by-side, -side, park at her place, sneak down through her yard, and park, or set up right behind her house. And I gave a few calls, and her pet turkeys go berserk. If Kurt uses that, I mean, they go... They lose their minds. You'd think you were hunting Rios down in Texas. And I said, um, and this bird shut up. I said, I need to move. So I moved farther away. I circled way out around to the edge of the woods. Came in, kind of on the opposite side of my sister's. Gave one little call, and he hammered it. We talked back and forth, and I switched over to clucking. I got to thank my dad for that one. I got to thank him. He's, a, he's driving truck today. And so he couldn't hunt this bird. And I said, well, this bird, what tells me is this bird was just passing through, looking for a hen. Late season. And um, so I switched over to clucking. And my dad's taught me that. All it takes is a few clucks. And it was like a light switch flipped. He came up here like a locomotive. I almost shot him on that side of the ravine. I thought it was a little far and I thought he was coming. And he did. He came up perfect right up the gun barrel, right in front of the camera. I am so blessed. I got to thank my wife too. She has put up with me being obsessed with these birds. I gotta thank her. She has really, really been a trooper supporting me. So thanks, hon. And thank so I gotta thank my wife Emma, my sister Emily, and my dad Mark. And I'll thank my mom for her prayers. Because <laughs> she she is a prayer warrior, if you know my mom, so, and that's what it takes to kill sometimes. Sometimes that's what it takes to kill these late-season gobblers, especially in a 
hard hunted state like PA. Took it down to the wire, May 20th. Oh, thanks, Jesus. So incredibly blessed. So incredibly blessed. We get to put another check on the gun. Check number six. I don't know what it is about chasing these birds, but I just don't get enough of it. <clears throat> Trying to work a time and a half job and chase these birds. As I work landscaping this time of year, it's crazy, but every while and then it works out that I get to be out at the right time. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate it. Well, I am convinced that we do not get enough mornings like this. That you get to sit in the springtime woods and talk to a wild turkey and have them come in and do it perfect. I'm so, so incredibly grateful. It's been a tough season. It's been very tough. Um, it's been hard to fill tags this year. It's been kind of a, just a goofy year, and I've been kind of play, plagued with bad luck. It's been a good season. But 2022 is over for me. Well, for my tags. Still got a few people I know with tags, so I'll try to get them one. Just incredibly blessed to be able to do what I do. I don't know if I'm a good turkey hunter, as I said on my first bird, but I would like to think I am persistent. But not every morning before work, the whole season except yesterday. I finally took one morning off. Four and five hours a night and 12 hour work days was starting to get to me. So, we're going to say a quick prayer and go get him taken care of, and I'm going to have to get to work then. So. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for um, the wild turkey and what it means to me. Starting it off in Virginia this year and again into the year of PA. And I want to thank you for an understanding wife to support me and what I do and all the people that give me permission to hunt on their properties. I pray that you bless them all for it, Lord. And I want to thank you for this bird and how he did everything, Lord, just perfect. Thank you for guiding my shot and thank you for a wonderful season. And I pray that everyone who watches this video, their dreams come true. Most of all, I thank you for what you did for me on the cross. To your precious name. Amen. Well, time to get him taken care of.
Well, I just got him home and I'm measuring his beard and I found out something pretty cool. He's got a double beard. Not much separating it, but about a half inch. Nine and three eighths his main beard and six and an eighth his secondary beard. And seven eighths first, so. Perfect bird. <laughs>